let's go. It's going to be a good one tonight, y'all. Looking forward to this one. Thanks for calling me back, Greg Loper. Appreciate that. <laughs> but nah, nah y'all, happy Thursday. Super excited for the night. Miss Joanne is coming through. She going to tell us all about the Baltimore market and how she is killing it being a minority developer. When I say developer, it's definitely levels to it. So I'm looking forward to hearing her story and, you know, what she has going on. Um, don't forget, we got the community cleanup next Saturday at 55th in Baltimore at uh, at 12 o'clock um, from 12 to 2. And then don't forget, May 29th, get your tickets early bird special. Make sure get your tickets. Uh, that's going to be for May 29th. Like that, right on time. Dun, dun, dun. Hi. How are you? How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I'm blessed. Good to hear. Good to hear. Well, thank you for coming and jumping in here. Definitely appreciate it. Um, I'm a fan. I just gotta let you know. Look, I'm a fan. I'm <laughs> a fan. and I love the glasses. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Amazing work. I, I love how you push your content, always finding ways to encourage people as well and to show them that they got to get this wealth together. So, well, well, no, that's why we need to talk to you because you're the wealth queen killing it down in Baltimore. <laughs> so, you know, so no, I so so I know a little bit about a little bit, okay, a little bit about this, but but no, it's when I tell people this level is like, yeah, I buy a house, no, you buy blocks, there's a there's a difference. So you know, definitely salute to you. Thank you know, you. gotta gotta give you your, you know your your roses, your flowers now, because you know you definitely out here in the trenches making it happen. Thank you know, you. and making it look easy. I know it's not easy, but you're making it look easy. <laughs> Man, you have no idea. Definitely isn't. Definitely isn't. <laughs> you know, but we're, so I don't mess up, Joanna, right? Yes. Yes, all right, just making sure. I'm Joanna. I'm like, I know it's Joanna, but let me not. Somebody like, no, take the A off, the inner side. Uh, but no. you know what? I'm glad you asked because there are people that say Johanna, Joanne, and I'm like, there is <laughs> an A clearly at the end. Yeah. Well, see, I, kn I know because growing up, people mess my Anthony, super simple, but depending on who you talk to, it got an F in it, it got an E Anthony, at the end. Anthony, yeah. All, all kind of stuff, you know. So it's like, yo. Like, no, just add. So I ain't, I ain't ashamed. If I mess it up, I add. So, you know. But thank you, though, Joanna, for tuning in. Um, can you give people, like, the cliff notes, like, the of who you are and your backstory, like, how you got into real estate before we jump into all the good, juicy stuff? Sure. Um, it's not that much. I can tell you that because I was born, actually, in real estate. So for those that don't know me, my name is Joanna Jane. I am the founder and CEO of O'Hara Developments. Um, I'm also the chairwoman of O'Hare Development CDC Incorporated. Uh, we are a community development corporation that focuses on inner city development. We were born officially December 20th, 2017, after I decided to fire my boss and completely branch off from real estate, you know, with my father who exposed me to the game. Um, so my Saturdays growing up was actually <laughs> Saturdays. You fired, you, you was working the family business? Well, I was working at by nine to five. I fired them. In okay. addition to that, I said, dad, I got to go. That was something I said, dad, you know, I I'm trying to show you some things. I'm trying to share some things with you. And I think you only see me as your baby girl. This is not going to work. Mm. So <laughs> I guess I double fired my boss. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> and, um, you know, I was really searching for something beyond just flipping the house. Um, what I was saying was, is that my Saturdays growing up was really, you know, going to go pick up rent with my dad uh, after school. You know, I had the big white utility van coming to pick me up. We would go to the, He had all them keys on the, on, the, on the belt. Yo, Anthony, if I take you right now to the garage, <laughs> it has not changed. It has not changed. Straight get janitor keys for like every property keys that of tenants that been moved out years ago you know <laughs> yeah all of that so um you know growing up like that's that was my life but i didn't realize that it was privileged and my family's from the west indies on top of that so the grind is completely just it's just different i, my, I don't know how else to put it do it 24 7. 
Yeah, the, yeah. Our, our, it's, it's something in our DNA that is just different. My mom's from Trinidad, my dad's from Grenada, and when they came here, they just were on that, uh, you know, providing opportunities for education, legacy, wealth, and that's all I knew. I didn't know until I got to college that I didn't, um, that that wasn't normal, right? right. So they I was with the other kids was growing up in the community. Yes, exactly. Um, and, and I just was like, wow, you know, I just didn't know that certain things that was normal for me, like writing checks, um, you know, we would go pick up money from the tenants. And I remember coming home with my dad before we would make bank deposits and the money would be spread on the bed and we had, I had to count it. Like that was assignments for me. You was, you, never, was you were playing Monopoly. Right. With real money. Know. With real money though. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea. Um, and then I would be more excited about getting the lollipop when we went to the bank teller than actually counting the money because it just wasn't like, I knew it, but it wasn't something where we did it in a way of like, yeah, it's what we do. You know, we get like, that's just never was our style. It still isn't, you know, and, um, we're big on always like looking to take care of our family that's still in the Island. So we would always like send barrels of toiletries and different goods and so oh, forth. Right you know, to make sure everybody was good. So, you know, um, fast forward, I decided to say, you know what, I don't want to just flip a house. I don't want to just, you know, have a, have an apartment building. And don't get me wrong, we all start somewhere. Everybody has different passions. My dad did not force entrepreneurship on me. Um, he encouraged me to go off and get my academic degree. So I have two masters, undergrad, I'm financially licensed to be, in a, you know, to provide financial coaching and so forth. And when I was looking to like, okay, it's time for something. Like I can't keep building programs and I can't keep, you know, doing this stuff for other companies. And I'm not really sure my dad is really feeling me on how far we can go with this real estate. And I said, okay, I'm a jump. And I did it exactly that. And I had no idea what Baltimore was going to bring my way. I, I tell people all the time, I went to Baltimore for one house. <laughs> yep. One house. That was it. And now you, now that's the, that's the, the focal footprint right there. Pretty much. Like that's our big, that's our big stamp. And, and we're growing. Like we have some other stuff that's going to be coming out that is still in pre-planning phase. Can't talk too much about it, but I'm just like, I did not know it was going to be this. Okay. <laughs> well, so for the people who don't know, what is this now? Because oh, okay. like, a little bit that I do know, okay. you know, I see the development in Baltimore. Yeah. I see, so, or before we go there, right, maybe let's back up. Okay. So you went from, I wanted to get one house, right? Now we're connected and we're doing, don't, Basically. you're doing tax credit programs. Say that again? You're do, aren't you doing tax credit programs as well? No. Um, I know about them. Oh, okay. you mean so like tax liens? Is that what you were? No, 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 not the tax liens. So, like, because you're like doing the development piece, right. you get like the tax credit in regards to, um, you know, like. Oh. The okay, so people that purchase homes through me, um, some of them are in historically designated areas where they can get a ten-year tax abatement. So, if that's what you're talking about, yes. Okay, so yes, no, but either way, well, you you tell it. Let me shut up. You tell it. <laughs> okay, well, give me the question because now I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> so the the question is, so in, so you were doing originally like, all right, the mom and pop real estate. That's how you grew up. But you yeah. said, hey, I want to turn this into a uh, more like a uh, into like a, a business, a full infrastructure. Yeah, I just knew that we needed to do more, but I wanted to make an impact. That's what my thing was. I wanted to okay. make an impact, and I think that my dad didn't didn't see that part because. Sometimes when you've been trained a certain way for a period of time, you know, when you're used to one plus one equals two, what do you mean one plus one plus one? Like, it's just like, <laughs> wait a minute, that formula don't sound right. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit thrown off. So I was looking to make impact. I didn't want to just do your traditional real estate. Long story short, I reconnected with an old college mate. And um, I found out through his wife that he was actually – became a real estate agent and he was working in Baltimore with a developer when she and I were talking about something completely separate. Like that phone call was really about like financial advisory services. So I okay. never 
It was never a phone call about real estate. And I have to share this because I'm a woman of faith and I want people to understand that when you decided to do something different and it sounds crazy and people like, listen, we got a formula. It works. Like, what are you doing? Like, come on. Like, you just got to go when the spirit is leading you because this lady never called me for real estate. She called me for advisory services. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's my backdrop to this. Okay. So eventually um, when, she, when I heard that her husband was doing some stuff in real estate, I said, oh, wow, you know, um, I'm leaving a piece of the story out and I can't do that because that's wrong. Let me go back. So she, she called me about advisory services. She shared something with me personal and I encouraged her. I said, listen, if that's what he wants to do in regards to real estate, encourage him because this is just time to do it. Encourage yeah. him to do it. So we leave that phone call. She called me back some months later. Remember, only called me for advisory services. She says, I'm so happy that you encouraged me to, you know, um, just go forward, push up, whatever. And she said, he's doing really well. He's working with someone out in Baltimore. That during this time, I'm figuring out what my next step is. I had just sold a property. I'm like, I got some money. I need to figure some things out. I'm, I already gave my job the deuces. You know, this is how much I had in retirement. I'm like, I'm looking for something. So when she said that, I said, light bulb. I said, I got to connect with them. And she just was real passive about like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll pass your number. I said, no, 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 sweetheart. I need you to hear me good. I need you to give him my contact tonight. We talked, and Anthony, we were in Baltimore within 48 hours. Mm. And when I got there, though, as much as I had family in the Maryland area, area I have a, a good friends, I had never seen Baltimore like this. Okay. And when I pulled up, I'm looking at all this development that's happening and the people that are walking by and not even realizing what's happening around you, So you're them. talking about West Baltimore? Uh, this was not. This was uh, the east side at the time. Okay. Right? Okay. So um, met up with the guys. We had great conversation. But I took my hat of so in social work because I have a master's in social work. And I started explaining some things to them from a macro lens on how they can still do this, but ensuring that we're also keeping the people first. And when we started talking about affordable housing and different programs and housing counseling programs, we just like, we just fell into great deep thought of how you could take it to the next level. Like real estate, it can really be the tool and the healing to so many things if you do it the right way, if you position it the right way. So, you know, we leave that. I come back to Philly. There's no deals on the table. I didn't go there for that. I really went to see like what's going on. Mm -hmm. Come back to Philly. Her husband calls me or he texts me, I think it was. And he says, how soon can you get back to Baltimore? And I'm like, I mean, <laughs> when? I, I, sure, whenever. I, he said, can you get back here in two days? I get back to Baltimore, never asked for the address of where I was going into the morning of. When I pull up, I didn't know that I would be talking to people in the housing department. I didn't know that the, I would be talking to political leaders. I didn't know that. From the that, that I encouraged his wife that called me about financial advisory services. So when I tell people about how this stuff is about always making sure that you do right, serving people, you just never know. And you also have to speak it. You got to put it out there. Like that didn't come from me searching for a real estate deal. That came from me encouraging someone, honestly, in a, in a, in a part of my life that I was not feeling the most, you know, encouraging. <laughs> I was like, right. let me encourage this sister. And it was through her that now, boom, we have this relationship. And now we actually have a strong city relationship, our company. Um, you know, I recently was able to serve with Mayor Scott, a part of his transition committee for the city of Baltimore. He's the youngest mayor. And, you know, that opportunity, all these things wouldn't have come without that. So I, I always, you know, remember the, the small things that other people may skip over of how I got where I am today. And we're still growing. You know, right. I still look at it like we're still a baby. We're still, you know, blossoming every day, but it's getting bigger and bigger every day. Right, uh, right. Probably bigger than I even see. So when people <laughs> talk about it, when you mention, I'm like, yeah, I, you know, I guess it is kind of big. <laughs> <laughs> and from that conversation, literally, literally, when we had the meeting, you know, they said, basically, if you could come here and do what you're saying, we will definitely, you know, encourage you, provide whatever support we can. Some things I can't talk about publicly, but 
that's how it all happened. So it went from like one house to five houses, from five houses to 10, to basically a neighborhood and then a neighborhood, you know, with houses turned into conversation with land and well yeah. wait, but you see how you, you slid that in like so like you said, like you like, oh no, 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 no. Watch this. <laughs> a house to a house or two to a block to a neighborhood. Now we talking about land development and more. Yeah. And then in addition to that, the counseling services, right? So you got the the, the, the masters, I'm sorry, excuse me, masters in social work, right? I only got the bat the bachelors, right? Okay. <laughs> social work where you can provide help to the community so they're not, they're not left out and so that gentrification doesn't continue to push them behind which what our community is already behind. Correct. Correct. So we do, we do mixed community development. So people in our area, by the time that we've wrapped this up, which we're going to be there for a minute, because when you're talking about neighborhood development, community development, this is not a, I'm in six months, I'm out. Like, that's not what it is. We're there, right? So we're talking about if we round it at 10 years, this neighborhood that was once forgotten will have now had families there, mixed community living from those that may have purchased homes at market value, because whether we like it or not, inflation happens. What, what bread costs five years ago is not the cost today. But we mm -hmm. can control the market when you know how to create the value in the market and say, okay, we'll drop the first two or three at market value, create the comp, and then slide the next few, create a base model where we could sell those below market value and still provide opportunities for those that can't afford the creme de la creme property. Mm -hmm. Then, because we also had land, we can talk about, well, can we create some condos and mix that in there? You know, you could be strategic. And then you look for partners, corporate partners that can pull in with you and say, can you drop my material costs? Because I need to be able to do this. Quite and honestly. I'm doing it in bulk. There you go. So, I don't know, you got you got the, the wheels going, right? You got the <laughs> wheels going over here. And I'm I'm saying that vision of, like you said, because I'm with you 100%. So like right now I'm in this position where I've been flipping, I done did some rentals, but I'm like, these little single jingles ain't it. Like, yeah, I eat, but I got to get back out there and eat again kind of thing. And then on top of that, like I do see is like, damn, I feel bad. I sold that house. I feel like I should have kept it. Like, you know, but it's like when you know you're in this community for a five year, 10 year run, you know, you still can have that feeling and emotional attachment to the situation because you know you're helping the masses versus just one person. So I'm saying like I'm kind of torn on how do you connect those those pieces of putting that I don't know that that development piece like how do I connect the development piece? Help me out with the question a little bit more. Like how how do we put how do we go from being like all right again that mom and pop piece to the you know to the really making an impact so what you want to do you want to create a model that always is like it's always turning regardless so in our model on our, so we have a for-profit and we have a non-profit right so we have two entities that whatever the for-profit does is approximately three percent that gets donated into the donated into the non-profit so our non-profit owns the land and manages uh, about 27 lots. So what we do, we take that, we circle that money, and that 3% goes into keeping up with keeping the, the lots clean, um, mm -hmm. mowing, all of those things. So we're also controlling the curb appeal. So yes, the community is happy, right? Because that's less, less trash, less, de less debris, but it also is helpful for those that are coming in, interested in buying in the area, because now it's increased curb appeal. So some people probably saw, I think it was last week or week before, that a um, woman buys land and launches financial raise to do you know, this outdoor recreational space, basically. So that's a part of it. So all of that is donation dollars. Um, it's also using your network to say, hey, do you want to be a part of what we have going on? You mm -hmm. know, this is how your company can be involved. So it's different ways that you can do it. But I will say that if you have an internal model where you could say, 
run your numbers the same way that you do a regular mom and pop as you, if you want to call it, because I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Let me tell you, some days I wish that's all it was, to be quite <laughs> honest with you, you know, but you can still run your numbers the same way, but okay. see if you can afford 2%, 3%, 1% that you say, okay, this part goes to ABC Elementary School in the community that provides a financial literacy program. And I know... Uh, Tanya, that's a financial advisor, I can pay Tanya to go to that school two days a week. Now the school doesn't have to look for a person to offer the, the class. They also don't have to pay for the person. You provided a solution. Right. So all these, th and the reason why I can come up with this stuff like this is because this is what I was doing for other schools. Okay. So there's so many ways you could do it. You could do it through land. You could do it through a financial uh, education service. There's so many, or, or you could actually even connect with a local how a, a local existing housing and financial counseling program and see how you could partner. Right. So if you build the structure within your deal and maybe decide, hey, not to take so much, I'll donate X amount to an existing 501c3, or you can create your own, you still don't get the tax write off. So, <laughs> so build the structure all right i love it i love it so and now though you guys are or you guys are launching or you already launched the program that you're providing housing for people i think you guys are like giving them grants and counseling yeah we okay. already launched we launched march the 5th we actually um we just reopened our doors we had over 20 people sign up actually we about to have our first person apply for their pre-approval so nice. i'm excited about so you, that i'm huh? You guys are almost like, I guess, doing like a NACA situation where you're building credit, teaching them financial literacy, and then helping them secure the funding? Yeah, I guess if you want to call it something like that. But I think NACA has their own platform in itself. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really call it an initiative because Baltimore is where we are now, but we are going to be launching in other cities, right? So, and I mean, obviously... Can you share? No, nah, I can't share yet. I can't tell you this. I am coming back home. Okay. Okay. I can tell Thanks. you that. Okay. <laughs> I can okay. tell you that that you know I'm definitely coming back home. Um, I got some things for Philly as well because I mean this is where I launched my first financial literacy program. I have you know now we're virtual, but I have my, my annual girls financial literacy summer camp. You know, so Philly is always going to be home. This is where stuff was already happening. So when people say, well, you know, why why you pick Baltimore? What about Philly? I'm like, y'all didn't know I was here all this time. I came to the schools. I was already <laughs> teaching the kids. A lot of y'all, I came to y'all house and gave y'all insurance policy and did your retirement <laughs> plan. You know, y'all must have forgot. <laughs> but, you know, when you see it on the big scale, I think that's where people are like, well, what about Philly? And I'm like, I've been here well, you, all this time, guys. Well, it's, it's tough. Philly, Philly see you, but they don't show you love until they see uh, the others giving you love. Come on. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Y'all got to give me love while I'm home. Right, right. Because then when I leave, I might not want to come back. Y'all didn't appreciate. It. <laughs> but 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 we appreciate you for coming back and saying, "Yo, I'm I'm coming back." Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So with that being said, when we launch our program and we we launch initiatives. So while we're there, while we're building, we launch initiatives through these partnerships with existing housing and financial counseling organizations. So through that, we were able to customize this initiative where. It does look different if you go through O'Hara Depart O'Hara Partners versus mm -hmm. if you went through that organization completely on your own. And anybody can do that as long as you have the right partnering organization that's willing to be customizable with you. Gotcha. gotcha. So through that program, we offer up to forty three thousand dollars in down payment assistance. I know. <laughs> I like what forty three thousand? They they don't they shouldn't need that much money. Well, I mean, I said, let me get with as much as I can. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to doors. Per, per person up to 43000 Per so, person. Or I guess I should, I don't know if this is a bad question, good question, but with that 43000 then you guys are doing more than just the FHA 3.5%. So now these people won't have PMI and they're going to have instant equity. it is stackable it is stackable yes and some of our partners anthony 
um, has already stated to us that some of that money, it's not a whole lot, but it's still enough that they can be flexible with those dollars and use it towards their um, closing costs and not solely their down payment assistance. But I mean, anytime you got a, 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 a bag waiting for you to buy your, a, buy a house and all you got to do is go sign up. So can we, can we talk about that? Where it's like, I feel like when we try, like having that helping spirit, the struggle to help people that don't necessarily see the help or want the help kind of thing. So how do you deal with that? Prayer. Okay. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Forty-three. Who wouldn't want to buy a house? Like, and same thing you said. Like, yo, I've been doing home buyer workshops for years, and people be like, "Well, nobody's telling us how to buy a house, so we can't." That's why we've been renting. What? Like, <laughs> hello? Yeah, yeah. And that's. I mean, I try my best to put the information out there. You know giving it to people. But I also know that people are also very attracted to those that want to show that the latest car they have, the latest house they have. So they gravitate toward those people more than those that actually, you know, can really pull full receipts for a decade. And that's no shade to anybody. That's just facts. We as African-American people, unfortunately, we still struggle with that. As soon as I get it, I got to wear it. As soon as I get it, I got to this. Right, and right. sometimes you'll get caught up with the wrong person because you decided to go with that person because of what they can show you on their on their body and what they're driving versus the quality of what they can actually provide you. Mm. And that can be very hurtful. But, you know, I, honestly, I just pray about it. You know, I say, God, I'm just going to continue to serve. I'm going to continue to do this. And those that are supposed to get the information, get it. Like people said, ask me. I said, listen, this is not just solely if you if you're a Baltimore um, resident today, if you decide, you know what, my job is allowing me to work from home. My kids, you know, are pretty much virtual. You can move to Baltimore within a year with this program or actually within six months, depending on what part of our program you qualify for and take advantage of it. You know, we catered to Baltimore City because one, we know that right now their, their city initiative, which I talk about this in the book, you have to listen to what this commu what the community is asking for. I built my company. Honestly, the first year, all I was doing was being quiet and being an ear in the room and being willing to just listen. So how we grew and how we created programs, I listened to what they wanted. So when I decided to create the housing and counseling program, I said, well, I know their initiative is to reduce vacant houses. So this program is not for those that are in Baltimore County or Howard County, it's going to be Baltimore sp city specific. And on top of that, by me doing that, there, there are certain dollars that I'm going to get from the city. That's going to also help with down payment assistance. Mm. So when the mayor then turned around and won, one of his uh, initiatives, one of his pillars is to reduce vacant houses and lots. So you got to listen to the people and build with them. And that is why my first ebook volume one is building with the heart of the community. Because if you understand that, there's no problem securing the bag. There's people that will give you money to build for them. There's no, there's no hunt for hard money all the time and all this other <laughs> stuff. If you just listen to the people, but people don't want to hear that, Anthony. They want to hear, this is my Tesla, this is my this. And I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> if that's what you want to so do. And, you know, to each its own, but that's just not how I was raised. Quick story. I remember one day, one Saturday, we were, we were getting ready to do a, um, a, a bank deposit from rent. And my dad lives in a nice part of Philly. We um, lives in a cul-de-sac, mixed houses, some mansions, some mini mansions. And we pulling out the driveway. I see Mr. So-and-so got a Benz and Miss So-and-so got a BMW. And my dad liked Chrysler's and Buick's. That's what he liked. Mm -hmm. So we're backing out the driveway. I was like, Dad, why don't we have a Mercedes? So he says to me, if we have a Mercedes, I can't pay the house off early. He said, we also send goods and so forth for our family. So what would happen to them if I decided to have all the luxury things that I could afford if I did that? Mm -hmm. That was the first and the last time I've ever asked that man about a luxury vehicle. If my dad was to walk into the room today, most people would not even think that he's in a position that he's in. He's 90 plus years young don't owe nobody a dime and all assets are free 
Look, and when we talk about generational wealth, it ain't no entanglements with the will and all the other stuff. They free and clear. They y'alls. If you mess it up, that's on you. But you're not gonna say it was me. <laughs> but he, but 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 Pop did his thing. Where, yo, you, how many siblings you got? On his side, it's a total of three of us, and my brother passed away, so it's me and my sister. All right, sorry to hear that. So, Thank so, you. but but y'all is look. You get your four houses, I get my four, or however many you know saying. We good. <laughs> look, and if look free and clear, what you which when you picking your rent up? <laughs> But right. but the goal. So the, I'm glad you said what you said about the prayer. So I'm gonna remember that because I just had that conversation with one of my good friends, and we was talking about you know our journey, and we was felt like feeling how you were like, yo, I feel like I need to go rent something or do something crazy to let people know, like, yo, I just I'm buying a house next week. I just flipped the house a couple weeks ago. It's like you know I know you, but like you said, like you know it's easier to be attracted to the shiny thing. So it's just reminding yourself, like, yo, that's not what you got in the game for. But like you said you know, we're doing, people are doing other things that you can't see behind the scenes. And that's what is really meant for. So that's, that's really dope. Oh, yeah. And good thing, like, yo, we're not, we're not alone going crazy, like thinking about it or even seeing it. And especially dealing with social media is like, you would think right now, you think everybody balling, everybody up right now. Hmm. <laughs> and it's not true. Right. Tenants included. All, all my tenants, I see them on social media going to Miami and Atlanta. Oh. <laughs> I'm not even going to get into tenant conversation because, you know, that's a whole, if I pull that receipt, that receipt say different. That receipt say, <laughs> if you couldn't pay rent last month. Right, right, right. But you got a new Gucci bag. But I'm not, we're not, go. they, I got, uh, <laughs> not gonna, we're not going to go there. We're not going to go there. Um, But even in this journey, right? So how is it, I, so you said prayer is one thing, but just how do you just stay grounded to keep the vision growing? Because I feel like as entrepreneurs, you know, we, we get this idea and then we reach it. But now it's like, all right, how do we keep growing that vision? So I want to be honest with you. It's breadcrumbs for me. I did not have this planned out. This, this project, in all honesty, does not belong to me. It belongs to God. I did not have this planned out. I never left my job. I never branched off like I did from my dad with the mindset of I was going to create a multi-million dollar company. Never did. It was literally like, I, it's almost like a spiritual thing where God was like, I need you to do something great. I'm going to do it through you because they're not expecting it from you. And I'm going to give you these breadcrumbs a little bit along the way. And as time goes on, you'll see how it all adds up to the loaf. But just stay with these breadcrumbs right here because it's all going to make sense later. And when I tell you, that's exactly how it happened. I can, I can, the people that I talk to every day, some of those same folks were in that very first meeting that I had when I didn't even know where I was pulling up to. Right. So it's, it's, I, I didn't know. But what I do say is that in times of challenge, what I found myself to do, and now that I have a, a board of directors and folks like that, that I can be able to call on and people that also um, are spiritually grounded and also are legacy focused, when the pain points hit, hit, that's when we're like, we got to grow. When pain points hit for us at O'Hara, it ain't no taking a, a, a step back. Because now we got all these houses up here. Your face is everywhere. You done committed to a whole freaking community. I can care less how many. I can care less how many. Who we got on here? Kendra, Kina. I can care less how many followers Kina got when I've got all this other stuff going on. I'm like, listen, it don't even matter. <laughs> You know, so that's the part that keeps me grounded. And the other part for me is that most people will look at this like, oh, you know, she's doing a lot. Da, 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 da. You don't know what that looks like when that invoice come in every first week of the month. Yeah, it look big, but big stuff come out too. Everybody want to be a boss until it's time to write that check. Ooh, it's a look. whole different situation. You know, so what keeps us grounded is like when the pain points hit, we got to grow. So I'm going to share a personal story with you, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times people want to know how you're doing this. But again, are you willing to put in the work? When last year hit the first time, there was no, P -P there was, there was no PPP for us. I was paying my folks out of my pocket. I was going without. I was like, listen, mom, we coming over on Sunday. And don't get me wrong. My family is always going to make sure we're cool. Right. But when you start hitting certain points in your bank account, you're like, hold up, 
wait a minute. This don't, you know, this is not the call that I want to have to make. This feels uncomfortable. But, right. but quite honestly, had that didn't happen, we probably wouldn't have started the housing and financial counseling program the way that we did, because that was something that was like, ah, uh, I think I'm going to do that one day. But we really were in a situation like, oh, okay, we can't really build the way that we want to. What do we have within our five-year plan that we can move up? What could we start doing? Had no idea that that was going to actually extend us another block. Land came out of last year. This financial counseling program, we actually started, you know, planning for with NHS of Baltimore, who is one of our primary partners. We didn't know all that stuff was going to. So through pain of the pandemic, we grew. Right. So when a pain hits y'all, y'all better not go backwards. You better pivot and figure out the next thing that you can do to keep growing. So that's what keeps us grounded. But the other part is, it, is that at any point in time, we could have lost. Right. So never get too, hold on, you know, don't, uh, that's how I, that's how I kind of feel like God, like you, you go you ahead and at any moment, at any, at any moment. And because I know that this is God given, I can't floss the way other people floss. I can't mm. for a second. This is me, my personal testimony. I cannot Anthony for a second, start acting like I just had millions sitting in the bank and I did it all. When I know there are certain properties that were donated to us. That's what I said, donated. So I'm not going to get out here and act like it was all just Joanna Jane being fly and dope. <laughs> nah, that, a lot of this was being obedient, putting God's people first. And when you take care of other people, you will always be taken care of. And that's my motto. You ever heard of The Go-Giver? No, share. So it's a book um, called The Go-Giver. So I'm saying your story, you're The Go-Giver 2.0. Oh, thank you. I got to look up the book. Yeah, it's, it's so again, COVID hit. I happened to be in a bookstore. For some reason, this rare book just was talking to me. And I read it like in two days. It's called The wow. Go-Giver. I forget the author, but he's got a series. But The Go-Giver is like the, the one of the best books, I would say, out of his series. Wow. But oh, when I definitely look at it, and it's all about serving and being a pro not necessarily a problem solver, but being a, a vessel for the community or whoever your your immediate circle is. Yeah. And when I hear your story, that's all I hear is about, I connected the dots, I filled the gaps for helping people. And, and in return, now I have abundance. Like you said, I've been getting breadcrumbs that's eventually going to turn into a loaf. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. A lot of people don't even know um, that same picture that they were, that, that was out with the meme, we picked up trash there when we couldn't build. On some real stuff. Like, I was paying people out my pocket. Can you go clean that spot up for me? Right. But Until see, the community but, turned around and was like, can you buy this? I was <laughs> like, oh, you know, all right. So can I ask a question about Baltimore? Hopefully I can answer it. All right. So about the auction, I've been hearing things oh, about... You, you, oh, I'm sorry. You started breaking up. Say that again. I said about the auction. I've been hearing things about y'all, that online auction y'all got, where they be selling the, the houses for like... 5,000, 10,000? Yeah, I'm listening. Go ahead. Why you make that face? Go ahead. Because I have... Okay, Philly is home. Y'all hear me good. Baltimore is my baby. Right. It's a different... It's a difference. I've done went through some labor pains in Baltimore, so it just hit different. So the way that people go about the auctions, I, I kind of have my own personal take on it, but I still will answer your question. <laughs> Okay. I just was, well, I mean, I wanted it like, hey, for people trying to get their foot in the door, do you recommend or do you agree with going to the auction to try to get their, their foot wet coming down to Baltimore? Yes, but not at first. Baltimore is that city where kind of similar to Philly. We, we, have, a lot of, we, have, a lot of, we have a lot of similarities. I would caution people about coming into Baltimore and just buying houses straight off the auction, sight unseen. Um, you don't know the community. You don't know a lick about that area. You could easily play yourself. Because a lot of times, depending on where you buy, you got to buy the block. And that's just the reality of it. Unless you're coming down with some strong, liquid funds to get some stuff going. Because a lot of the lenders are not going to give you money to fix one house and the rest of the strip is vacant. Right. 
what happens if you buy a property there and you didn't properly assess the comps, but you were just hyped because the house was three thousand? You don't know why they offering it to you at three thousand. And this is the stuff that pisses me off <laughs> because people do this stuff because again, it's cheap. I'm just gonna go and grab it, but you don't know anything about what's happening there. Right. You've never sat in an association meeting. You don't know what that community even wants. So, okay, you saw this house online and you're like, okay, uh, I'm going to grab it for $8,000. i am going to go put three tenants in there and charge $1,000 a month. Did you go to that community? Did you find out, like, do they even allow that? Because you can go there and try it. And then when they flap that petition in your face and say, you can't do a triplex here. And you're like, but why? I got a three-story building. <laughs> not going to work. Not in Baltimore, it's not going to work. And they will do it. You, you will go into these communities. Let me tell you something. Baltimore is one of those places that will fool you because you'll pull up and be like, oh, it's just vacants here. Ain't nobody and, over here. And the minute that you start, the people start coming. <laughs> Don't do that here. You right. can't, you're like, well, wait a minute. I'm, I'm giving y'all housing. Because you didn't talk to them first. And that is why my ebook says, building from the heart of the community. That's why I was like, when because it, it's a four-part series. I have four books in total that'll be out this year. And when I was figuring out what was going to be the first thing and I prayed over it and I heard God just was like, talk about the people. Don't go, well, don't go with the whole secure the bag, run the new do this, da, 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 da. Mm -mm. Go and talk to the people. Show them where they can get the information. So it's an interactive book. You can literally click the link. I'm giving you, you know, uh, tax codes you can follow and all types of stuff. But because it doesn't say secure the bag, here's how you're going to make $50,000 in 30 days. This how you're going to Ferrari. This, you know, like, where, when is the ebook coming out or is it out already? It's, it's out right now. If y'all go to my, uh, my, my, um, my link and my bio after we're done, you can go get the book. The book is less than $50. I actually did like a live earlier today because people are calling me, uh, scheduling coaching sessions with me. I charge because, like I said earlier, I'm valuable. But the questions, Anthony, they're asking me are in the book. It's in the book. I got a whole homework section in every chapter. But again, you know how it is. I I don't want to. I don't want to go through the hard part and have to sit down and read it all. Just give me the summary and let me go get started. And that's where people mess up because if you don't want to do the hard part, you're not ready to build not in Baltimore because that's not easy. But I but I've seen it on Instagram and HGTV. All right. And they edited the clips too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just messing because literally, I know, so, I know, so I you know, know the, the same them phone calls like, "Yo, I just got a couple questions." Like you said, I gave you a scheduled time because I know your question is not just one question. Correct. If it's one question, ask me now. But it's not, you know. But now you want to pick my brain, take me to lunch, dog. My kid, I tell people now, my kids can't eat this lunch that I'm about to go with you with. So. <laughs> I, Either you take all of us and my wife. There we go. Or click the link in my bio, and then we can set a time to talk. Yeah, no, but this it's the truth. But when I t I don't I can't speak for other people when they write material. I know when I tell you I have give I'm given the blueprint to how I did this. That's what I'm really saying because I want to be able to take what. This is another thing that keeps me humble. Uh, to kind of go back to that question. I know that my pain and where I've bled, whether it be personally or professionally, I always pray and I say, God, please don't ever let this be wasted. So let this be an area where I could be able to be a bandage for other people so they don't have to go through this experience. So I literally take my experience, what I've learned, once I've seen that, you know, my one plus one actually does equal two. And I put it out in material. I put it out in these master classes. We have a master class coming up. In, in May. And I said earlier today, I said, listen, to sit and talk to me, you're going to spend more money doing that than actually buying the ticket to the masterclass. And you're going to get four experts, including me, that makes five over four days. And they're from different area codes. Just get the content. When is, when is the masterclass? May 13th through the 16th. In person, and virtual. It's virtual. And so you get the free replay. Do this anywhere. Anywhere. May I have somebody 13. coming in from Dallas. So the, no, I'm sorry. He, I can't I can't pronounce the the, the the town that he's from, but Alvin Johnson. He, I know uh, actually, 
there you go. So you already know he had he did like thirteen hundred affordable houses. Um, he has like over a four hundred and thirty some odd unit project he's working on now. Uh, my one of my um one of my colleagues, uh, Jason Richards, said it again. I was saying, and it missed. I'm not Mr. Alvin said he lost it all at one point and built it and built it up. So who else do you want to talk to, right? <laughs> if somebody going to go through that. Um, and then I have a gentleman that he did $1.3 in lending last year in the midst of, pan of the pandemic. So he's going to tell you about lending opportunities. You, we already know our, 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 our girl, Tracy, you know, she's getting it sold every time you turn around. So yeah. she's going. No, I was just going to say, so I get that, that, that vibe, you and Tracy, y'all. Oh, yeah. That's my sore word, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, see? See, and y'all both got the cool glasses. Y'all got the coolest <laughs> glasses in the real estate game. <laughs> you know, so I'm just like, y'all, take advantage of the material. It's here. But we, as a, as a community, we really got to tap into these books because I'm really that geek that will be up sometimes 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'm reading through the fine print. Like, I need to know what the unit A section one four said about da 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 because that's the same thing I take and I'll go to the government and I'll say hey but hey this is the law this is what I need right here right. I know that I could purchase this at this amount if I don't build on it so I'm I'm saying May 13th to the 16th you either got that option and then if not get the ebook which is in your bio now yep both of them in the bio yep Okay, but I'm saying even before you schedule a consultation, buy the ebook. Yeah. So this way you could be prepared for the consultation. Correct. And then who's going to be eligible again for the counseling and the home ownership program? So you don't have to be a first time home buyer at that. Okay. So you, can, if you are thinking about moving to Baltimore City or you're already a Baltimore City resident, you can enroll in this program. I have someone that signed up that I believe lives in Philly, but they're looking to actually move to Baltimore City. They're already in the program. A female? Yes. I want to say I know who it is. Okay. So, you know, th like that people can really take advantage of the opportunity and, you know, do it that way. Okay. Um, I, I want to say I know who it is because she comes to all my real estate events. Too. Okay, well, I'm I'm happy that she she joined and and, and can take advantage of it, and that program again is free. Okay, yeah, and she's all about community as well because she's into planting gardens for people and vegetables, natural herbs, and all that stuff. Oh, I so, love it. Okay. Yeah, that's 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 that that's she. Yeah, she's gonna be she's gonna be dope for that. Um, okay, so I, we still got good time. You good on time? I'm very flexible. I'm okay. good. I'm in for the night. <laughs> our new COVID life, right? You know, right, right. Um, so I guess, what else do you want to leave the people with? Like, so we got the 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 nonprofit, we got the for profit, helping the community, helping blight so vacant properties plus helping gentrification. Um, I guess, like, if you could tell anybody just trying to figure it out in regards to like not thinking small, like, oh, you just get one house and you're a real estate investor. Like, can you give any in, in advice on how to dream big and think big? Often the thing that sounds crazy is what you're supposed to do. Say that one more time. Often the thing that sounds crazy in your head, but mm -hmm. you feel it in your gut, like, mm -hmm. what if that work? That's the thing you're supposed to do. Okay. That sounds so simple. But I know the people that's watching here probably, and I'm sure the way that you bite in your lip, you like, mm. quite often, the thing that sounds like, yo, but what if I did this and it actually worked? <laughs> nah. Don't say nah. Do it. Don't like, talk that's yourself. That's typically the thing. That's Don't talk yourself thing. out of it. Yes. That is typically the thing that you should also, that you should do. That's the thing that you, if you write the proposal, if you write the mission statement, if you talk to some people with like minds, they'll be like, oh, snap, I was actually thinking about that. Let me tell y'all, this stuff is spiritual. We are spiritual beings. Call it what you want. Some people may believe in, a, in, a, in this and that. And we are spiritual beings. More than likely, what we call them 
is a spiritual download. And if you're in a group with other like-minded people, because I saw, you know, one of your posts the other day, if you hang around four broke people, you'll be the fifth. If you hang around, you know, four wealthy people, you'll be the fifth. Someone right. that you are connected to, whether it be one of your coaches, one of your colleagues, they also dreamed about it. They also thought about it. They probably just didn't come to you yet. And it's, it's, it's you that needs to go to them. And they're going to be like, yo, I was just thinking about that. And I'm sure <laughs> people have had that experience. And you're like, oh, my God, I'm not crazy. <laughs> I was thinking about that, too. Right. So that's what I would tell people. Like, the stuff that sounds crazy, write it down. Those downloads, quite often, we easily forget them. For me personally, I know that those are messages. Those are spiritual messages. And all I need is a phone call something somebody interrupt an email and i'll lose it so i have like this little book or sometimes i'll use um the notepad section of my phone and when i get those things i'll actually just write them down and then okay. i'll go back and when i have those pain points i'll go back and be like "Ooh, what could i do okay all right we go and that's what typically what happens right so i know that i know probably somebody was looking for some super duper you know magical thing you know, do this, clap one, two, and turn around, stomp. But that's really what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and Yo, I you do said, it. That's the other you thing. Said do a stop in the middle. Because you know, that's what we want. We, right, the right. other part is the other part. The other part to that is executing. We have to execute more as a people. We are dreamers. We are spiritual beings. I'm telling you guys, like, I, I want y'all to share this out to, like, as so many people as you can right now to hop on to hear this. If, you, if they don't hear nothing else, if they don't hear anything about real estate, they need to hear this. We wait, are wait, wait. spiritual. Before you drop it, I need, so we know that y'all ready for it. Drop some fires in here so that y'all, we know y'all ready. Okay. Give us a thumbs up. Give us some hearts. Let's let's get this thing back to fifteen people, and yo, so so we know y'all ready. Share this out. Give me some hearts. Drop some emojis. There we go. They coming. They coming. Okay. Okay. We here. Okay. All right. All right. Cool, cool. All right so, go ahead. Give it to them. Give right. it to them. So, so we are we are spiritual beings right when we get these downloads what we have to do is write them down for me the word says write the vision and make it plain so the herald can run with it so when you look in scripture when you break down what herald mean herald means messenger so it's not just that you wrote it down because you just wanted to have a diary you wrote it down so when you come in connection with another spiritual being you can then take that give it to them and they can run play they can go take it to their lender. They can go take it to their coach. So someone can be able to then come back. And now we're creating, we're making a baby with this thing. We're in, we have now an incubator. So what you want to do is then execute on it. Don't just dream it. Don't let it drop in you, but execute. Even if it's just to get the domain, execute. We do poorly at executing and we lose opportunities all the time. So right. it's not just that it dropped in your spirit. No, it came in my mind. I wrote it down. I hang in the right environment. So now I can be able to share it with the right person, not everybody. And now we got to execute. And my execution don't have to look like Anthony's execution. It may look different, but I know that I'm working towards it because what will then happen, we will see quite often the thing that we dreamed about, the thing that we had clear vision on that we were like, yo, this might be able to work. And got to give it to somebody else right in your face. And you'll be watching, looking at somebody else on TV like, I thought about that idea. Or you'll see it on somebody's time. Like, oh, my gosh. I should have. And it happens all the time. No, it's crazy. Like, literally, you be thinking of this idea, the brand, the T-shirt, the LLC. And that you like, wait, I, I just, like you said, I just was thinking about it. And now they done got a whole slogan with it. And it's popping. Yeah, yeah. And don't do it based upon what you have in the bank. My company operates visually better than what the bank account looks like. You cannot do this based upon what you got in the bank. 
So in my class, I teach about how OPM works. Somebody is looking for your download. Somebody's looking for you. Here we go. You know where I'm going, Anthony. Somebody Look, is what looking for your down? download. And your download, somebody's looking to fund because somebody's looking for a tax write-off. Y'all don't make me take my glasses off and run around here. I'm going to give y'all a whole Bible study lesson the whole time. I'm telling you, your download that you got, that you into presentation. We were buffering there for a second. I want to, that's, that's how I know I'm saying something right. Don't, don't drop the number, y'all, because that means I must be giving you something good. <laughs> so the download that you received, you wrote it down, right? You did what you were supposed to do. Now, you turned that into a financial presentation. You created what they call a pro forma. That means you showed someone how you could take their money that's sitting in the bank and do some crazy stuff with it and give them a better return than the stock market could have gave them. You are the you are literally the answer to somebody else's problem. And more than likely, if you listen earlier and you had the structures created correctly and you understand urban development and it's all about location, 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 they got a tax break. They were able to shelter money all in your spiritual download. So I'm saying I got a, I had a call last week, last Thursday. These three gentlemen own the company. They know it. Like I went to school with one of the guys, but he brought his bosses on this Zoom meeting to talk to me about what I do. And, you know, I'm like, well, I just do real estate. They like, well, tell us more. So I tell them more. And they're like, well, we're interested in investing. We just got to find the right deal. But like you said, I, I wasn't ready for the pitch, but they technically were, in my mind, saying what you're saying. They were ready to give money. My, I wasn't ready for the pitch. So now I got to get off with you because I need to, I need to get <laughs> the book. I need the book yeah. to get going. Cause you just, yeah. Woo! Yep. And in my class, I actually am giving, well, my, my students get the template. I'm not, Cause I'm not giving that away, but in the class, I actually show you what they often want to see in a pro forma when you're talking to someone about OPM, because all the dollars need to do is make sense. If they, if they feel like you're a credible person, they feel like your, your project makes sense. And really, like I said to people earlier, that portion of the class, how to um, present and raise OPM, that works in real estate and out of real estate. You could be doing that for a t-shirt line. You trying to own a cell phone store, a shoe line or anything else. Does, where can they see the return in their dollars? That's it. That's where you want. This is another one. So here's a gem. When you're in those, when you're, when you're looking for money in business development or you're looking for money even within specifically real estate, what you want to do is start going on a lot of these state websites because there are people that have their funds. I'm giving y'all gems right now. Y'all already getting the master class. There are people that have their funds, F-U-N-D-S, their funds. Look. So in, if we're talking about what a fund is, a fund is a basket of different things. It could be stocks, bonds, all these different things, right? Um, commodities, everything. So think about it like you're, this fund with all these other people dropping in money that they want to see their money do something. They list them on different state websites. See, we, we up here looking at people's timeline and followers. What we need to be looking at is what the, what the state is saying we need. Right. And now you have a state website with all of these funds that are listed saying, if you have a project, if you have an idea, email here, here, call here, here, and here. We're living in a time right now where opportunity zones and opportunity zone businesses are very much relevant. Mm. So we're, again, location, location, location. I go over that in the book. It's not just go get an event space if you want to do it. Get the event space in an area that's considered to be an opportunity zone and get somebody else to fund it. Mm. All right, look, don't, don't, we're going to have to, look, now we need to, now we need to cool, cool okay. you off, get the ice bucket. Okay, okay, I'm done. Look, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Get you some, get you I'm some done. water. Woo! Woo! I'm done. So, because I want people to make sure they either going to get your ebook 
or they're going to come to the master class. The master class, okay. May 13th to the 16th, all day, what? What's the, the, the time slot? So it's, so those, so the majority of all of those days, except for Sunday, we start at seven. And we are generally on for an hour and a half, right? Um, on, on Sunday, Tracy is going to do her session at five. That's called Get It Sold. And okay. then at seven o'clock, we have the Before You Build Roundtable with Alvin Johnson, Marcel Umphrey, uh, Jason Richards, and myself. There may be somebody else that I'm praying she comes through. Because if she comes through, it's going to be a whole nother level. But just with those guys and myself alone, it's going to be amazing. Okay. All right. Well, well, I'm saying I'm, I'm checking my schedule now because I, I feel like I need to be there for sure. But I'm definitely... And you also get the replay. So, Anthony, if you want and you can't... If forever, for anybody that wants to attend, if you can't attend on a certain day, like, oh, I had plans on the 15th, like, you get the replay. Okay. All right. Well, definitely, definitely, like I said. So, look, salute to you, Queen. And not to mention, you're also, a, you're also a mom, right? Yes, I am. I have a soon-to-be 16-year-old. Y'all, like... <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you you gotta take that in too you taking that taking that in with oh my gosh i am so not ready we're planning we just started planning for this sweet 16 party and i'm like my baby like you know and she matter of fact i gotta give her a shout out she's a business owner herself um she's Ooh. the ceo of lee essential she makes her own body butter so y'all show my baby some love actually go what? support her support her line go buy one of her, her body the, butters social? At Lee Essentials. At Lee Essentials. Um, you can find her. She has uh actually, you know what? Um, she's another one that, you know, found pain and, and birthed something. So she has suffered with eczema to a degree um forever, basically. Mm -hmm. But we got it under control with natural products. And one day she made something, it started off as chapstick and she was making it and putting it in my freezer. And Anthony, I wanted to know why I had all these old <laughs> chapstick capsules in my freezer. I'm like, what the heck is going on? And that turned into something phenomenal where she has her own body butter line. She actually went to a Young Entrepreneurs Academy. They were based out of at, uh, Cabrini University. She went there for a year, learned about corporations and how to raise money. She was the second kid that came in with the top amount of, do of, of uh, dollars donated to her business. So that's my baby, Lee Essentials. Her name is Haley. That's my sugar plum. And uh, so show us some love, y'all. You know, buy buy her bottle for her birthday and beyond. Share it out with folks, and uh, it works. It works. Yeah, definitely. Well, well, you know, we we hear how mom is coming, so we know she's like you said. Dad then showed you. Now you showing her. So the the family legacy gonna be strong, even if it ain't. <laughs> it's gonna be in something, and it's gonna be strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And thank you so much for having me tonight. I appreciate it. Um, I know we run in, in similar circles and it just seemed like, you know, your name has always come up in some shape or form and it's always come up in a positive way. And I tell people, you know, it takes 20 years to build your reputation. It takes two minutes to lose it. So continue doing what you're doing and serving people. It doesn't matter who sees, who doesn't. The right people see it. The right people share the information. So that's all really what matters because you don't want to have your name messed up, you know, trying to chase <laughs> what other people are doing anyway. Right, right. Well, no. Well, I definitely appreciate it. And you know, Vernon had was was pushing because he because every time I see him, I'm like, "Yo, where are you at?" He like, "Man, you know, I'm down here with Joanna, down here in Boston." I'm like, "Because right, I've been ever since we've been connected." I'm like, "Vern, I need you." He like, "When I get back, dog." I'm like, "Oh, you gonna be a couple of days? I already know y'all got y'all doing what y'all do." I'm like, "All right, so, yeah, but, yeah." And it's coming out so great. You know, and shout out to Vernon. Uh, all money shots, y'all. Check him out. He got the another is... for forty this weekend. Yeah, you know, his work His work is phenomenal. Um, actually, you know, we're actually doing a documentary. So y'all could go to my YouTube page, um, Joanne and Jane on YouTube. We have about four clips out of our story. Because my team, they thought I was crazy at first. Because, you know, when you start talking about spiritual stuff, people were like, what, what spirit do you serve? Which one is it? <laughs> and when they started to see, like, how this stuff was happening, and my, my GC, he was like, wait a minute, we got another house? And another one, he had to change his whole schedule around. He was like, listen, this lady got me working in Baltimore. She got enough work for me for about a year, you know. So my architect was like, Joanna, I really think that you need to document our story. And, you know, for me, I was like, man, it ain't, you know, we just, it is not that deep. 
and it kept coming up. And I reached out to Vernon, and he was like, "No, we could we could really do something." So he is helping us create, you know, um, phenomenal content do documenting our story because I know that we're creating history. Right? No, you definitely are. And Vernon, I come up with ideas like you say. I talk to Vernon. And he'd be like, I don't know. And then once we do it, he'd be like, I got it. Don't say nothing else. So, you know. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I love it. But no, definitely keep documenting because, like I said, I'm a fan. I'm always watching, paying attention what you got going on. You know, so you encourage and inspire all of us to keep being great. So definitely thank, thank you. Thank you. you. Anthony, you. I wanted to share something really quickly before Ooh. I go. And I wasn't sure if this was going to be the time to be able to do it. But I feel like I, I gave so much information that one, I would love to see people get involved. And two, I want people to know that this is something that we could do and we don't always have to do it in the mindset of waiting on subsidy to come mm -hmm. from like on a national level. So can I get like maybe two more minutes? Do you think? Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So as y'all all know, um, I, I purchased this land, right? It was an old, um, a, it was an old abandoned urban farm. That's what it was. It was an urban farm. Um, and we purchased it based upon the fact that the community really just felt like, you know, it's, it's not doing anything. Um, it's not serving us in any way. And here you are. <laughs> what can you do with this? Right. And at first we were really hesitant. We weren't really sure. And then we said, no, we could really do this. Um, we'll, we'll maintain it. We'll, we'll clean it in the meantime until the time comes for us to, to really map it out and y'all tell us what you want to see here so quite recently we came up with the it takes a village initiative and what i'm sharing here is i want everybody on here to blur the lines that we're talking about baltimore for a second blur those lines like they don't exist blur the lines of maryland like they don't exist and i want us to think about that this is us these are this is our neighborhood down the bottom this is our neighborhood north philly this right. is us, right? And we have an area that we need to do something with to take care of us. So our kids have a place to play. So our families have a place to actually engage. And I said, I was crazy enough to think this. Here we go, those crazy moments. I said, what if I did a national campaign that there were people from Alabama there were people from Detroit, from Connecticut, from all these different cities and states that looked majority like us. Because what started to happen, Anthony, there were people that were on a corporate level that were starting to write checks. And I said, what I want to be careful is this doesn't turn into that. And y'all fill in the blanks as you miss, as you may. I said, but what if I reached out to majority people that look like us and we all came together as a village and change this, this little area, this little piece of a nation, that's the name of my documentary, this little piece of a nation together. Now, what even better if people took this idea and they duplicated it? And you had hands from every area serving Philly. And we didn't have to ask the mayor for money, the governor for money. We didn't have to write a grant <laughs> application. We just I took the same going. money that we, that we just, that we blew in Miami. We will take the same money that we blow in Cancun. We take the same money where we rent in these jets. We take the same money. But we said we're going to serve an area that looks like us. How would that change the game? It would be so, phenomenal. It would be phenomenal. And that's exactly what we're doing with this space. So if people want to get involved in the It Takes a Village um, campaign, they can actually go to O'Hara CDC to get involved, you can even email my company directly if you actually want to be a part of the commercial. If you're serious about this and you're like, yo, I want to commit. Like, I actually want to have my name on a donation wall or like, I want to be a part of this. You can email us directly and you'll be a part of those, you know, behind the scenes conversations that we're putting this together. Because I was like, I don't want this to just be something where the big boys come and save us. I want this to be something that people that look like us mm -hmm. took care of us. And if we could do it in Baltimore, we could do it in Philly. If we could do it in Philly, we could do it in Minnesota. If we did it in right. Minnesota, we could do it in Dallas. Because we got to stop coming together only when one of us gets shot. We got to stop just coming together when we protesting. And, like, we, we've endured so much of it that it's almost like we've become a custom of that's the only time that when we... When it's trauma. Do, when it's trauma. And really, 
is causing us to have trauma on ourselves. So we have to find positivity, find positive ways to say, let's come together, let's do something, whether I'm volunteering in sweat or whether I'm, whether I'm giving a check and be a part of that because mm -hmm. I just think it could be phenomenal. So that whoever wants to get involved, that is completely, a, that's not an investment in terms of you getting something returned as far as, you know, interest. That is donated time, resources. If you're connected to a company that is looking for diversity and inclusion opportunities, or if you're just saying like, hey, I got an extra thousand, I, I do it. Let us know because we're going to do something phenomenal. And it's going to be the blueprint for more to come. There we go. <laughs> I like that. I like that. All right. Well, I definitely appreciate it. Um, like I said, as soon as we, well, for people don't know, it's a part two to this live with By the Hood. I don't know if you know Jimmy and Corey. Hey, no, they always show me love. So I know them because they show me love. Okay. So when I, when we, me and you get done, I got to jump on with them because they got okay. a couple of now. Well, um, you know, so we look, it's, I don't know. It's, it's so much going on right now. I'm like, yo, I got to I gotta keep this notebook by me because I don't want to lose this stuff that I need to download. Um, but, me, but I'm definitely getting your ebook, and I'm going to see about that May 13th to the 16th once I check my schedule. Um, okay. Or get to buy the replay, so I just buy the replay. You know, but <laughs> I appreciate right, cool. it. Uh, and I'm looking Thank forward you. to it because I feel like we go, this is just the beginning of us and our conversations for sure. I'm here to serve. Let's go. Let's go. Well, All thank right. you. Y'all have a good night. For the night. people that can find you, what is your social media one more time? The Real Joanna Jane. Definitely go there. Follow me. Show me some love. Share out the information. It's all there. I put it all in the book. <laughs> there you go. In the community, don't you got a, you got another IG for the community group? Oh, excuse me. How can I forget? O'Hara Developments. <laughs> see, see? I told you. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. <laughs> Yes. So you can go to O'Hara Developments and follow us there as well. And if you know anyone that is thinking about moving to Baltimore City, live in Baltimore City. We got up to $43,000 on the table, guys. Help somebody out. Share the information. Are you guys working with other agents? Like if they, if you, if it's agents that have clients that want to connect with you? Yeah. So we do have a director of marketing for our real estate. However, people that come in, if they have their own realtor, we do not say that you can't use them. Okay. No, so I'm saying that because my, my big homie is from Baltimore. He moved to Philly, moved back to Baltimore, and he's an agent down there. So he's definitely got clients. And I'm like, this would be perfect because where oh, he's at, yeah, definitely. he's, oh, he's yes. been trying to, you know, be that voice for his people for where he's at. Mm -hmm. So yep, I'm going to have to segue, segue y'all. And I just connected him with um my hard money lender. Well, one of the hard money lenders with one of his folks because they bought some investment properties. I'm like, look, we ain't got to go to them no more. Talk to Joanna. Joanna going to help you connect the dots. <laughs> yep, we keep the I money in, in, the, in the circle. We keep the money oh, in the circle. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Come down and do y'all thing. Yes, ma'am. Uh, that is O'Hara Developments. But when you look for it on IG, there's no apostrophe because you know how IG operates. And thank you so much. Um, yes, I appreciate you too, King. Thank y'all so much. And thanks again, Anthony. I'm going to let you go so you can get to buy the hood. Tell the guys I said hello. <laughs> look, when that, look now, but now I got to look, O'Hara Development's really buying the hood. So we're going to have to plug it in. Look, you, they going to interview you. <laughs> you about to be on a, on a podcast. Okay. Speaking into existence. I'm cool with it. There you look. I'm watching. It's going to happen. Look, they just said, look, it's done. Salute. It's done. I was <laughs> Yo, I didn't even realize he was on here. He was like, yes, salute. Look, Jimmy, <laughs> Corey, they always around. Like you said, they always showing love. So, you know, we definitely about to make it happen, you know. Okay. All right, cool. Well, y'all know how to find me. All right, y'all have a good one, y'all. Talk to y'all later. Thank you again. So just give me like two minutes, y'all. We're going to jump right back on with part two of Thursday night. I ain't never going to bed tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye. Thank you.